When people work with text in After Effects, they frequently apply what's called layer styles to the text. And the basis for that is Photoshop. Photoshop has a feature called layer styles. And people work in Photoshop and then take their Photoshop work and bring it over to After Effects. And there's this really close relationship between After Effects and Photoshop. And so to ensure that relationship really goes smoothly, After Effects uses Photoshop layer styles. Now, layer styles is kind of a big topic, but I want to bring it up here because it's so closely aligned with working with text. So let me show you some layer styles. And to follow along, just open up After Effects and create a new project. We'll just make a new composition. Now I'm going to make it my standard way here with an HD 10 seconds white background. Now just add some text. Now I've talked about how you add text by right clicking and adding a new text layer. That's one way to do it. Or you just click on the type tool here. And we'll do that because it lets us put the text where we want it to be rather than putting it in the center. So I'm going to click over here and I've got black oak standard selected there. I kind of like that because it's so hefty looking. And I'll say here is some text on two lines. I want to make it a little bit larger. So first of all, I'm going to say I'm done here by clicking on the word text down here, the layer. Now it's done. I want to be able to make it taller. So I hold on the control of the command key to turn this into the selection tool for the time being and drag that around and center it up. And there is some text. Now, when you apply an effect inside After Effects, you typically go to the Effects and Presets panel, find that effect and apply it directly to the layer. So let me show you how that works. So I'll go over here, I'll type in Drop Shadow. And there it is. I'm going to drag it down here. And now it's on the layer. And the controls for it show up here in the Effect Controls panel. And they also show up inside the layer. If you open up the layer, you see there's an Effects Property Group. Open up the Effects Property Group, and there's the Drop Shadow Effect with its Property Group. And there are the various properties that match these properties up here. So you can adjust them up here, and you can put keyframes on them down here. That's the typical way that you apply effects. I'm going to keep that here for the time being. But the way you apply layer styles is completely different. You take the layer and right click on the layer, and then there's layer styles. And there are the styles, drop shadow through stroke. And I'll explain these guys in a moment. Or you can select the layer, make sure it's active, and go to the layer menu, put the layer styles down here, and there are those same nine layer styles. So why does it work this way? Well, After Effects is emulating Photoshop. In many ways, After Effects is kind of like Photoshop with animation. So let me switch over to Photoshop. So here's Photoshop with some text here, got a text layer. Now if I open up the Layer Style dialog box, there are those layer styles, just as they are inside After Effects, with one exception. There's Pattern Overlay here, and Pattern Overlay is not available inside After Effects. But if you apply Pattern Overlay here to any kind of a layer inside Photoshop, then import that entire Photoshop document and keep the layer styles as part of the import, then that Pattern Overlay will show up inside After Effects, despite the fact that it's not offered as an original thing inside After Effects. So it really emulates this whole process here. I'm going to talk about importing text from Photoshop into After Effects in the next lesson, but I do want to give you a heads up about layer styles. Let me close this here and go back to After Effects. All right, so here we are in After Effects. I'm going to turn off this effect by going over here and turning off the FX there, like that. Or I could have turned it off up here. Now I want to bring in layer styles. I'm going to right-click on this and say Layer Styles. Now, I could pick these guys one at a time, but for demonstration purposes, I will show all. That brings in all the layer styles here with their eyeballs turned off, so they're not really doing anything yet. What's cool about layer styles inside After Effects is that you have this blending options thing that goes along with it. Open that up, it says you have a global light angle and also a light altitude. So you can use this thing to make sure that anything that looks like it has a drop shadow or a bevel has the same kind of lighting if that's what you want. You can choose to accept the global lighting. And there's some advanced blending things here, which are not going to be covered in this course. So here are all the various layer styles, minus that one pattern overlay that I mentioned. So there are nine here in After Effects and 10 in Photoshop. I'm just going to run through them really quickly here, starting with Drop Shadow. I click on that. I'm going to open it up and show you something. Look at all the properties here compared to Drop Shadow here. Folks ask, you know, why bother having Drop Shadow as a layer style versus having Drop Shadow as an effect? And you might think, okay, yeah, I do wonder why, because there's so many more properties here than there are here. In fact, you can have much more control down here. But there are some things in terms of when effects are applied in terms of sort of a stacking order or rendering order. And I'll talk about that way down the road inside this course. But nevertheless, if you're thinking about doing drop shadow, you might want to think about using a layer style to do it because it has more properties, more options. I'll take the distance over there. There it is really obviously. And I'll make it a little bit larger. When you make it larger, it gets kind of fuzzy looking like that. 
The spread, though, makes it sharper. That works. You can make it so it's noisier, rougher looking. And you can change the opacity, something really hard like that, to something a little bit softer like that. One of the cool things about working with drop shadow inside a layer style versus inside an effect is that you can make the shadow appear right around the text instead of falling down away from the text. Let's just take the distance to zero, like that. And I can take the size and make it glow like that. If I want to change the color, let's say, to light blue like that, you can make kind of a glow. Let me turn that off. All right, let's close the disclosure triangle here and go on down to inner shadow, turn on its eyeball, open up its disclosure triangle and check out its property group there. You can see that it has basically the same properties of the outer shadow, the drop shadow. Let me zoom in so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to switch to, let's say, 200% so you get a better look at these guys. Hold on to the space bar to temporarily turn on the hand tool and move this around. You can see the little black there, that's showing up as the inner shadow. If I change, let's say, the distance just a bit there, bring that in, you can start seeing how that works. Change the size just a bit, so it kind of pushes in on the center like so. And all these guys are keyframable, by the way. You can always change these guys over time. All right, let's move on down to the next one. Instead of inner shadow, let's go on down to outer glow. Outer glow adds what you'd expect, a little glow around the outside. Right now it's yellow. I'll change it to something more obvious so you can see it. I'll turn it red here. You can see the glow forming there. Let me just push this down just a little bit so you can see some more spread. There you go. Size, which is different than spread. Gives a little softer edge to it like that. And you can have, instead of a single color, you can have a gradient. Click on gradient. Then you need to edit the gradient right now. It's that default black and white. But I click on edit gradient. These are the color stops they're called. Right now they're black and white. Notice the black here is the corresponds to that black color stop there. And the white here corresponds to the white. So the white consumes most of the glow. The black just has this little edge to it. So most times when you do a glow, you've got sort of a hard color on the inside and a softer color on the outside, but that's not required. You can also change the opacity of the outside. If I click up here in that stop and start reducing the opacity, then that softens up the edge. See how the opacity is affected by the outer one there? Let's click on the color stop or the opacity stop. I'll click on the color stop here just to give you a sense of how that works. We'll have red, let's say, on the inside here, like so. There's the red, obviously. Click on the black color stop here. Instead of black, we can have, let's say, I don't know, green, just to be obvious. There's the green, but just has a little edge to it there like that. You can change the, what's called the midpoint there, but the midpoint doesn't change things too much because it wants to blend the red and the green together, not so much as move the edge. See how the edge changes a little bit? The green gets a little bit thicker, but doesn't really push it all the way out there. The red really wants to dominate, basically. So we go back there. The inside basically wants to dominate the whole glow thing. Click OK. There you go, and that's how you do glow. You just kind of scrolling down the line here to inner glow. Obviously, it's going to be very similar to the drop shadow, inner shadow approach. It'll be outer glow, inner glow of the same kind of features. Open that up, and it's very similar. This time, we're going to be glowing on the inside of the text. So it's the same routine with the gradient and the color. I'll change the color here, let's say, to purple like that. And I can see that it's coming in on the text rather than outside it. Pull it down a little bit like this the size like so we can bring it in there's two approaches there's edge and center so notice how center looks quite a bit different than edge let me just go down a little bit farther here turn off that guy and go down the bevel and emboss now bevel and emboss has kind of a equal partner over here in the effects and presets panel i'll type in bevel I'm scrolling down here to the bevel alpha and bevel edges bevel edges finds the edge of an entire layer Bevel Alpha looks for the edges of something that has an alpha channel, and text has alpha channels. So I'm going to turn off Bevel and Boss here for the moment, and apply Bevel Alpha this way. And you'll see that Bevel Alpha has one, two, three, four properties. You look at Bevel and Emboss here in Layer Styles, you see it has what? Four, ten, has more. It has like three times as many, four times as many. So if you really want to work with Bevel and Emboss and have it be really effective, a Layer Style is the way to go. Let me just get rid of that guy by clicking on it and pressing Delete. So let's turn on bevel and emboss here as a layer style. Various different kinds of bevels. Let's go with the default here. Different techniques in terms of how it looks like that. Go back to smooth. Direction, depth, all kinds of stuff. And again, I'll remind you, these are all keyframable. They're all animatable. It's really pretty amazing. All right, let's just close that guy down. 
and move on down to satin. Satin kind of puts a layer of color on top without it being a solid color. It gives you options here with the blending mode again to blend them in with the color beneath it. Right now, multiply is the standard way to do satin. Multiply kind of darkens it with whatever color you put on top, which right now is pretty black, right? We change it to, let's say, purple, dark purple like that. It'll look similar. You can adjust the opacity. It's not like it's going to be obvious that you've put purple on top. But again, you can have the color change over time if you like. And you can change the way it looks. There you go. That's called satin. Not necessarily something you'd use that often, but there you go. And color overlay is not something that you would use all that often. Because why put color on top of something when you can just change the color of the original thing? You can also adjust its opacity, like so. And you can also adjust its blending mode. Blending mode, you can just change it like this to something else. And it just blends in with what's behind it like that. Gradient overlay is very much like a color overlay, but this is a little more interesting because it's a gradient. Just as we edited the gradient before, we edited it here the same way. It has color stops. Right now it's black and white. Black and white. You see that the white is down at the bottom, the black's on top. That can be changed. We'll change the black to something else. Let's say red. Change the white to something else. Make it blue. Now you can see that it looks like we're missing something, right? Let me go back out to full view. I'll go shift forward slash, and there's our full view. And now you can see that we've got red and blue because it's a gradient across the entire layer as opposed to across individual texts. We can change the angle like so. Let me zoom in a bit by going period key. There you go. Now you can see it a little bit better. You can also change the kind of gradient. Right now it's called linear. It means it goes straight across it like that. You can make it into, let's say, a radial, which is centered. The radial angle talks about how much it takes in, like so. We have a diamond reflected. This kind of puts it down the middle. It has two sides to it. There you go. That's gradient overlay. And finally, stroke. Now, if I open up stroke here, I'll show you that it has a number of properties. Blending mode, color, size, opacity, position. If I click on the text, if I make the text active and go to the character panel, I can have a stroke. Right now, the stroke's turned off. If I click on this and click again, then I can add a stroke, for example. Now there's a stroke. So why bother doing a stroke here? Well, I've added a stroke, and my option is how large is the stroke? There you go. And my option is also stroke over fill or fill over stroke. Those are my main options there. I'm going to turn off strokes by clicking on this little no stroke color guy there. We'll go down here, work with stroke. Here you have more options than you have over there. Here you have color, of course, and size. But you also have opacity, you can adjust the opacity of the stroke, and that's again animatable. Position can be outside, which is the way it is by default, which kind of crunches up against things next to it. But you can make it inside, which is just inside the edges. So it doesn't crunch against stuff like that, or you can center it up, which is kind of on the edge, straddling the edge in and out, outside being the default. You can also change the blending mode. If you have a stroke that is on the outside, it'll blend with things behind it, or it'll blend with the stuff that's on the text, depending. So there are more options with stroke here as a layer style than stroke over here with the character panel. So that's a rundown on all the layer styles here inside After Effects. You can apply them to any layer, but they work really effectively with text. And keep in mind, you don't have to do just one at a time. As I was going through here, you can have as many of these guys switched on and animated as you want.